This is section 15 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Educational Theatre by Mark Twain, read by John Greenman. On November 19, 1907, Mr. Clemens entertained a party of six or seven hundred of his friends, inviting them to witness the representation of The Prince and the Pauper, played by boys and girls of the East Side at the Children's Educational Theatre, New York. Just a word or two to let you know how deeply I appreciate the honor which the children who are the actors and frequenters of this cozy playhouse have conferred upon me. They have asked me to be their ambassador, to invite the hearts and brains of New York to come down here and see the work they are doing. I consider it a grand distinction to be chosen as their intermediary, between the children and myself there is an indissoluble bond of friendship. I am proud of this theater and this performance, proud because I am naturally vain, vain of myself, and proud of the children. I wish we could reach more children at one time. I am glad to see that the children of the East Side have turned their backs on the Bowery theaters to come to see the pure entertainments presented here. This children's theater is a great educational institution. I hope the time will come when it will be part of every public school in the land. I may be pardoned in being vain. I was born vain, I guess. At this point the stage manager's whistle interrupted Mr. Clemens. That settles it. There's my cue to stop. I was to talk until the whistle blew, but it blew before I got started. It takes me longer to get started than most people. I, I guess I was born at slow speed. My time is up, and if you'll keep quiet for two minutes, I'll tell you something about Miss Hertz, the woman who conceived this splendid idea. She is the originator and the creator of this theater. Educationally, this institution coins the gold of young hearts into external good. On April 23, 1908, he spoke again at the same place. I will be strictly honest with you. I am only fit to be honorary president. It is not to be expected that I should be useful as a real president. But when it comes to things ornamental, I, of course, have no objection. There is, of course, no competition. I take it as a very real compliment, because there are thousands of children who have had a part in this request. It is promotion in truth. It is a thing worth doing that is done here. You have seen the children play. You saw how little Sally reformed her burglar. She could reform any burglar. She could reform me. This is the only school in which can be taught the highest and most difficult lessons— morals. In other schools, the way of teaching morals is revolting. Here, the children who come in thousands live through each part. They are terribly anxious for the villain to get his bullet, and that I take to be a humane and proper sentiment. They spend freely the ten cents that is not saved without a struggle. It comes out of the candy money." and the money that goes for chewing gum and other necessaries of life. They make the sacrifice freely. This is the only school which they are sorry to leave. End of The Educational Theatre by Mark Twain Read by John Greenman